Hey, yo, what it is and what's good, y'all? Welcome back to 280 Plus, the social media podcast where I take the conversations off the timeline and go beyond the tweets. I'm your host, Lowe's Def, and I'm back here for episode 148. 148, yeah, man. We, we rocking and rolling. If you're new to the channel, man, I need y'all to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. Um, if you got something to say, leave a comment. If you want somebody else to see this, think it's entertaining um share the content man it goes a long way but like let, let's get the comments up likes up um watch the shorts you know we, we busy on shorts and you can also catch us on uh social media man especially instagram uh, facebook we on we on twitter and we uh, sometimes we post on snapchat but uh yeah man all over the place and uh yeah man back we back man we back for another episode and i'm here solo this week um last week man we had a great conversation um and it all centered around the kendrick lamar and drake beef right and so uh just i think we're gonna start there just with an update with some updates and kind of where we're at now in in this in terms of where the beef is like who you know who's the winner as of right now uh, and i'm i'm a kind of i might use i'm gonna keep using that caveat a little bit but who's the winner right now and then all the things that have, some of the things not all the things because there's been a lot of things that's been kind of transpiring and then we've been hearing um lately but uh yeah man it's been it's been it's been a ride man so since since i've last recorded since we last had a show uh a, a bunch of things have happened right so um it was it was crazy too cuz uh shout out to my man uh Luigi um my man fucking fuck fuck Luigi or you know on 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 Twitter he's on Instagram too but he he he's mostly on Twitter man um real good dude uh very very knowledgeable man very very uh unbiased I, that's one thing i say and i i felt like we had a very unbiased uh conversation about uh, about the beef last week and and all, obviously we have our opinions on certain things and you know certain certain instances we might not always agree but it's you know show both artists love you know I mean at the end of the day that's that's what that's what I'm biased part of being unbiased is that it's it's kind of giving credit where it's due right and I feel like I feel like we accomplished that so just before we get into some of that though I'm just going to talk a little bit about like uh, just this, the social media reaction and algorithms and things like that. So one thing I noticed is, is uh, whenever, and I, I wonder if this is the case with other things as well, but whenever you're dealing with something that's very subjective, like rap, right? Like music in general and talking about who's better and things like that. Um, I, I noticed that whoever the internet has kind of determined as the winner, those are the people that's going to come in your comments. Like those are the people that are going to be flooding you for the most part. Um, you're not really going to hear from, you know, pe the, the losing side too often. You're going to hear a lot more from the, the winning side or the side that's in the lead at the moment. And this is crazy because, you know, we obviously, you know, Right now, if if we had to say who's winning or who won the battle, if it, if it's over, if it is officially over, Kendrick did win. You know what I mean, I'm gonna say that for the record, Kendrick did win. If it's you know if if we're calling it, I do think that Drake is gonna. I think Drake is gonna respond, but it might be like a Jay Z type of situation, like where he drops Blueprint too. You know what I'm saying? Like on on the song Blueprint. Um, Jay Z comes at Nas again, and it was almost like a little bit too little, too late. And but it's crazy because the narrative there is like Jay like walked away limping and and like he was struggling, and it, it wasn't even like that. Now Blueprint Two, um, it it didn't do the best out the gate. Like that was one of the albums that, and it was because it, he did a double disc, and a lot of times with double disc you can probably condense it down to one album. Like, you know I mean, like what is your best album and, and, and put, put that out. Right. And so, so the blueprint two is a double disc. So like, there was a lot of songs on there and then people felt like, you know, it was, you know, maybe some throwaways or some songs that wasn't that great. So that, that's what they're looking at. And, and that's what could happen. Drake, when he drops his next album, he, he might address the beef. He might even drop another song. Um, but it might be for a lot of people, it's going to be like, oh, that was, I mean, it don't matter no more. And that's kind of what happened to Jay-Z. Um, 
people felt like he took a blow with Ether, and Ether is a good is a good diss song. Um, I do think the Takeover is a better song. I do think the Takeover is better. So I actually think it's a better diss. Like I think it's a better diss because I think it it's more. You know, Ether was more like I hate the way that you walk. I hate the way you. You know, it was like that. Like that section of Euphoria. Like it. That's what. That's what Ether was. I felt like Jay kind of cut into who who Nas was a little bit and, and like whether it's the business side or not like and and you know we don't like to talk about sales and things like that like he was harping in on that because that that's that's what this bat that's what that battle was about is about who's the best you know what I mean and that's kind of what this battle is about too um but yeah Drake is gonna probably put some out and it, it's probably not gonna it's probably not gonna hit the same um especially with this time going now since we recorded, the Heart Part Six came out. The Heart Part Six literally, yo, that joint dropped like, I, and I'm I'm dead serious. It dropped like a half hour after we were done recording, and so it was like, you know, when I first heard the Heart Part Six, and I'm gonna just, I'm gonna speak on this first, and then we're gonna get into try to wrap some of this up. Um, the Heart Part Six, when I first heard it, I was like, oh, Drake is rapping, like, yeah, go Drake. I mean, defend yourself. You know what I mean? Like, that's that was my feeling when I was listening to it. I was like, yeah, like, oh, yeah. You know what I mean? He's addressing all these things. He's addressing all these things. And it did not get received well, though. The Heart Part Six, especially by Kendrick fans, I think people or people that are siding with Kendrick, it did not get received well. They were like, oh, he's throwing in the towel. He's, oh, uh, he's scared. Oh, he's quitting. Oh, he don't really want that smoke. Why is Kendrick going to still drop all this, whatever? But like, Drake was rapping, rapping on there. Like, he was really rapping. And I thought he did enough. I thought he did enough to, like, if at the very least, make it at the very least make it debatable you know what i mean and i think this is a this is still a preference battle like if we talking about it there are going to be still people that say uh uh drake won there's going to be people that say you know kendrick won so um it there's a lot of irony though in the heart part six because um he drake is like keep talking about when he's talking on he's like oh yeah all my stuff was straight facts like let's get to the facts let's get to the facts and then as things have as things have progressed and and also too it's things that we can imply like there was them there was lies on both sides see what i'm saying there's lies on both sides it's just that the and drake did have a, a quite a few missteps see what i'm saying he had quite a few missteps and i think the the thing is that is that Drake just has way more material to come at him. Like he has way more, you know, chinks in his armor and things that you can clown him about. And he's very Google, Google, -o. He, he's very searchable on Google. Like you could search, you could find anything on, on him pretty much. Uh, crazy narratives, conspiracies, damaging things, questionable things. Like he has a lot of that type of stuff. And Kendrick is, it's pretty straight lace. I mean, he's pretty, it's pretty straight edge. Like you don't really got no controversy, and you know even, but but again too, I I like what Big Daddy Kane said. I'm and I'm going on tangent real quick, but I like what Big Daddy Kane said, and he was just like, yo, like back. He didn't like this battle because he was like, it's too much people like trying to dig into like who's telling the truth, who's that. He was like, but but if if it was a hot rhyme and you can get people to react to something, that's what it used to be about, and that's kind of even my stance on it was with even with battle rap, like. There's a lot of things that people say in battle rap that that's not necessarily true. Sure, you you do pick an angle and like you try to like it's almost like you're selling an angle and you're trying to make people believe things. Cause yeah, a a beef and and a battle, it's all about changing the perception on that person. It is about the skill, right? But when the skill is like, I think I think Kendrick is technically more gifted than him, but like Drake is not that far off in terms of of skill and ability, and in terms of like being able to ride a beat and like really, really be rapping. And I don't, I, I'm, I just don't want to hear the ghostwriter stuff. Like, like there's no way that he just has ghostwriters writing to the to the degree in which Drake raps. Or, I mean, it, it's not even about ghostwriting and things like that. It's it's literally like. Whoever is go if somebody was actually ghostwriting for Drake, like 
they're literally using language that he uses. They're they're making references that he would like that he would use because Drake makes all these like big time and I, Drake learned that from Rick Ross. Like the just the lavish references to stuff that like we don't like you have to search what the fuck he's talking about because you're like, oh, oh, that's what he meant. And and the thing is, Drake doesn't get credit for his entendres and and his wordplay because it's so palatable. Like because you hear it clear and it, it feels like you don't have to decipher it but like just like he i feel like i'm he's not like jay-z but this is a quality he has like jay-z says stuff that sounds very simple but like it's it's late it's actually very layered you know what i mean and when you really when people do deep dives on jay-z's lyrics you'd be like oh oh he was talking about that because it's it it's these like obscure references that make so much sense after you know what it is whatever so, but yeah, like just talk, talking about battle rap and 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 these kind of beefs, it always used to be about just who who again who can change the narrative, who can control the crowd, and things like that. Who can, you know, who can get people going? And this battle got too much about like, well, who's telling the truth? Who's lying? Who's this? Who's that? Who who's telling more truths? Who's telling bigger lies? And the thing is, when you have when when you have certain things in your back pocket, like Kendrick did. Um, just about, you know, when it comes to like some of the questionable maybe interactions that, that Drake has had, even though people have come out and said like, yo, it wasn't, it's not like what y'all think it is. Um, even, even in, in that breath, um, it's, 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 you call somebody a pedophile, like they, it's almost like they lost. Like, it's like, because now you're, you're fighting, you're fighting such a big deficit. You know what I mean? When you're, when you're trying to overcome that, because now you gotta, everybody's looking at every conversation that you have. They're looking at every interaction you have. They're looking at the women that you mess with. They're looking at, you know, and so, so everything gets into a microscope. And when you, when you, when you look at certain things too close, you don't see the full picture. You obviously don't see the full picture. Like, yeah, you might get a narrow view on something that, that explains your narrative, but like, are you thinking about the bigger picture? Probably not. So, um, yeah, man, that's that's just kind of where we're at. One note that I'll say is um, this is this is this was funny about this beef was that, and I'm I'm a preface this right. So I I always talk about how. Although I am a Drake fan, right? I'm I, I do like Drake. I have I'm not a day one Drake fan. I'm not a take care so far gone Drake fan. Like I did not like I really did not support Drake until 2018. It was when he it was kind of when he was in the middle of his push T battle where it was like, yo, like this guy, like he he was getting not it was almost like he became the underdog almost. I mean, he got kind of got knocked off his pedestal. And then, but then I'm seeing him like hold his own and I'm, I'm thinking he's spitting because it's like, yo, push it. Like I like push it T, but it's like, bro, you, you hating right now. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you cover that this guy cause, cause he's more successful than you. Like you hating. So, um, that's when I started really like fucking with Drake and like for in 20, uh, Scorpion is my favorite album. Scorpion is my favorite. And I thought, you know, so like. One thing is when I came into like when Drake first came out, I used to say the stuff like, "Damn, like man, how y'all liking this dude? Man, he from Canada, man. How y'all liking this dude? Uh, he got he had a head start, man. I mean, he was he's a TV star on Degrassi. Oh man, how y'all like this dude? This guy has a head start. He got a co-sign from Lil Wayne. Oh, he immediately gets signed by Lil Wayne. Like like he oh he's in Young Money now. He's a part of this this new group, um, this super group so to speak, and and he's he's getting all these accolades." doing a lot of singing on tracks and that, and back then you know you think about when Drake first really started popping off in 08 09 2010 right like and that's where that's that was his wheelhouse and it was like I wasn't listening I wasn't checking for that type of music yet I was still it was still the mixtape era was still holding on you know what I mean by dear thread um you know what I mean 2009 you get you get blueprint 3 you get Loso's way you get you get um the last kiss uh uh 2000 you know I mean there's a lot of albums there's st st still a lot of rapping I mean Rick Ross is is at the top of the game you know, is one of the top people in the game at that time 2010 right when Teflon Don comes out like he's he's at the top at that point he had got past 50 cent um 
the sound was totally different. MMG, the 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 growth of MMG. So we're we were still getting spitting, 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 spitting. So like when when Drake was was popping like that, when he was hot, he was hotter than fish grease. Everybody loved him. I was like, ah, that's I, that's not my that's not my cup of tea. Like like this guy has had a leg up, right? You know, and then even when he was even progressing into views and stuff like that, when he's using different accents, when even before that hotline bling, right? He's like, I'm like, this guy's a pop star. Like, that's what I was saying about him. And I was a hater when I was saying that type of stuff about him. Today, that that's the narrative now. It's like, oh, well, he's been a he's been a culture vulture. He's from Canada. He's light skinned. He's, you know what I mean? He, you know, he's stealing from, he, he, he doesn't really live this life. He's not a tough guy. He's not this, he's not that. He's a singing dude. So that was, that. that's the narrative now. That's the, po it's popular to hate Drake right now. And that, that's where it's like kind of, it's kind of getting weird because it's like, yo, all that stuff existed and y'all didn't care. Like y'all, y'all made people look like haters if they didn't fuck with Drake. But now it's cool to hate Drake and is it because Kendrick is the right messenger for that message to deliver that, that he's this, that he's that, he's this? Is, is that what it is? Or is there an agenda, right? So now circling back to what I started this with, right? It's it's crazy how the algorithms are because like anything, I, anything that we posted that was in favor of Drake at all or praising of Drake, it was all these people just in the comments like, oh, these Drake fans, oh, they don't know how to do. It. And it's like, oh, I ain't no Drake stan, right? Like, I'm not, I'm not like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually want you to look at some of my other clips, whatever, because it's crazy because the clips that were about Drake got the most views and the most comments, right? Negative comments, whatever. But then even the stuff where I'm praising Kendrick, ain't nobody watching that shit. You know what I mean? So it's like the algorithms are acting really, really strange. Um, and it's just, I don't like, I don't like where, um, this, this battle became about the cultural currency as opposed to being about, um, I don't know this, the music, it, it stopped being about the music. It started being about all these other things. So I'm gonna read this one thread that I seen. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this one thread that I seen today. And, um, it's just a fan. It's just somebody, you know. It said, um, for some Kendrick fans, blackness is their entire identity. That's why it's so important to them that black people adhere to black stereotypes. You have to listen to certain music and dress and speak, talk, date, vote, and act a certain way. If you fall outside of these guidelines, they will say you're not black, especially if you're biracial. And this don't even look like a, and to be honest, when I'm looking at the, the thumbnail, this is this is look like a brother. This don't look like somebody that's light skinned or, or mixed or anything like that. And it, it, I just said that and this way said, I'm not even light skinned like that. But every light skinned person will confirm this. Some of these fans represent a very toxic part of the culture. And then this was a comment after that. It says, Imagine Kendrick going on tour. He stops in Amsterdam and performs his di hit this track, Euphoria. The predominantly white crowd sings along all the way to the last sentence. We don't want to hear you say no more. And they all scream the irony. Right. And yeah, it's like, uh, bro, what? I'm light skinned. And, and can you buy a drink? <laughs> so it's just it's just weird. Like, that's what it became about. It became about blackness and culture. And and again, yeah, there were some missteps by Drake. Like he probably shouldn't have said the the slate. I didn't even think it was that. Sick. Like I didn't really take that line to be like, you know, everybody was really putting Drake's lyrics under the microscope, but not necessarily putting Kendrick's under the microscope because this is the thing. Kendrick, because he has the accolades, he earns all type of benefit of the doubt, right? Because like, you know, people was pointing out like certain bars of his in certain diss tracks was like kind of weird or questionable or or didn't make any sense. And people like, he don't make no mistakes. He's he's a Pulitzer Prize winner. Like he don't make mistakes. And it's like, what you know, I had people coming at my level of education. I had people that saying literally that they just said that we wasn't black. Now, you know, Louis, I, he, he, you know, Luigi, he, he Dominican. You know I mean, I'm black and Puerto Rican. You know what I'm saying? So, but like, I'm a, I'm a brother. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's like, it, and it's just funny. It's like, those are the comments that you just don't, you don't engage with. Cause it's like, man, I'm not about to have no argument with 
somebody that I don't know, that don't know me, that I'm never going to see about my uh, who I am. So it, this shit don't matter, you know what I mean, at the end of the day. But, um, yeah, it just, it just the battle just got, got out of hand in terms of that. Since we recorded, there was a shooting out front of in front of Drake's house. His security guard got hit. Um, we're hearing stories about um, Drake um, purchasing information and then getting played, and that was the thing. They're, they're like Drake. Drake was seeking out information, and here's the thing: people thought that was the smoking gun that he paid somebody for information. Well, it's it's people. It's kind of known amongst people that he's paid to get information from. In, in any of his beefs i mean he's tried he's dug and paid people to to find stuff whatever and so he could make some bars about it and that's not even the smoking gun i mean to me i'm like okay that's just kind of like how it kind of goes especially in the industry like you got to find you got to find content you got to find material and then and then you go from there battle rappers do it you know what i'm saying now they probably don't if they do pay they don't pay the same wage that a that a that a, a Drake would pay, but Drake apparently was also getting false information. Kendrick was getting false information, um, and and so so you're getting you're hearing narratives like that. Um, you're also hearing narratives that like you know it feels like you know the the powers that be wanted this beef to end because it's not good for business. Then you're hearing conflicting reports saying that no those meeting no meetings like that has have ever happened, but then. You're also hearing that like Drake, like people are saying ultimately that this is a result of just a lot of things that Drake has done to people that um, in, in the business and on the business side of rap that have not put him. Now he's not in a favorable position. It's almost like it's almost like the industry is rooting for him to lose. But we got to be real with ourselves like we don't we do we do need Drake. We do need Drake. Like Drake is not, he's a staple. He belongs here. You know what I'm saying? And it's gonna, you know, the landscape is gonna change a little bit. We're gonna be missing a lot of that that good music out of because that's the thing. This is what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that like even like people like Kanye, like Kanye, Drake, you know, people like that, like they they've managed to just turn it's not it's not just this boom bap stuff no more like it's it's like rap is music now you know what i'm saying like rap is stuff that can be played on all different type of stations and rap is is a genre that like we don't we you know in, in the hip-hop community we don't just we don't just chart on the hip-hop charts like we chart on top 100 now you know what i mean and we we weren't always doing that decades ago so like we need Drake. I mean, because you know he's the hit maker. He's the hit maker that you know these niggas depend on. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he said that out of his own mouth. And I, I, I feel that like that's where we're at. Will he drop again? Who knows? I think you know he didn't drop. He didn't drop after the hard part six because of I think what happened, like the shooting. Um, people are saying no, that that was a fit. That like all that's orchestrated. So he, so he had an excuse to get out of the beef. Who knows? Um, people are going to talk, and you know, we all we can do is speculate. All we can do is speculate. So, what do y'all think, man? I, 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 I have a feeling I know who y'all think is winning. Um, but leave a comment. What, what you think about this beef in general? Where does this rank? I think it. I think this is. I said it in one of my clips is that you know beef depends on replay value. I think there is a lot of replay value in a lot of these, and, and there's there's at least like four or five songs. If we took all the songs together, there's like four or five that like really have replay value. Um, we're gonna say like that. We're gonna say push ups. We're gonna say family matters. We're gonna say not like us. Right. I think those those tracks have the most replay value. Um, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't think Euphoria don't have replay value. Taylor May don't have replay value. Um, Heart Part Six, not really. Six Sixteen A in in L A. Meet the Great, like those songs, they don't really have the same. People are gonna listen to them because they want to, like, you know, like, oh, let me revisit this. But like in terms of like what we're playing, it's gonna be the the four songs that I mentioned, and those are probably the, those are the four songs that really came out. I'm just grateful. I think hip hop won. I think hip hop is winning. I, I, I've I been wanting more music. I've been wanting better rap music. And like, yo, it was like the rap gods was like, here, Los. You know what I mean, here go, here go a beat for you. And then 
Uh, we got some we got some classes out of there. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. So today's show, man, we're gonna talk about some some TV. We're gonna talk about some comedy, actually, man, because over the last couple of weeks, some big some big comedy has has been dropped. All right, stand up material. We got other types of comedy that have dropped, and we're gonna kind of and and these are two titans in the game, right? Another beef. This is kind of beef, but it's not beef. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, it's one of them silent. It's like a cold war, silent beef. Uh, we're gonna talk about um, lovers and liars, uh, a show that I we did not recap. Me and Levi did not recap this. We probably should have. Now that I'm looking at it, um, but we're just gonna kind of get into more like the not a, not a full breakdown of the show and recapping the show, but just kind of breaking into the psychology of of what's behind the show. Um, and then we might touch a little bit of um, NBA playoffs just as we stand right now because it's hard to really get into it too much and give you like I can't give you real time analysis, but I can give you some overall takes on what I what I feel, man. But all right, so let's move on. Um, Cat Williams, man, Cat Williams dropped a special, man. Um, and and we're gonna we're gonna piggyback that, and we're gonna talk about a little bit of the roast, Tom Brady roast, right? And so we got Cat Williams special came out that that weekend, that Saturday, live, right? And you know what else was live? It was the Tom Brady roast hosted by who? Kevin Hart. So so in real time, we had a Kevin Hart versus uh, uh, Cat Williams type of thing, and and really, you could see that you can see the differences in terms of like who's mainstream and who's underground. Right. So Cat Williams, his new special woke folk, um, it came out and I would say, I, I'm going to say this, Cat Williams is Cat Williams. You know what I mean, Cat Williams was being Cat Williams in that, in that special Cat Williams is funny. Um, that's why I like, even with the Sh Shannon Sharp interview, it was kind of like, I knew some of the stuff. I just felt like someone said, you capping a little bit. Cause this feels like a bit, a little bit. This feels like material. It feels like you're working some material almost. Um, one, but I would say solid overall. Like it was, it was funny. It was funny. Um, we, you know, we could, we could dive into it a little bit and maybe give some critiques and here and there. Um, I would say, yeah, it, it was solid overall. Um, it did take me a few times to actually get through the special, right? Like, so, like, I couldn't watch it in one sitting. I remember kind of going back to it and pausing it and having to rewind certain stuff, whatever. So, like, it took me quite a few, it took me a few increments. And maybe I just wasn't in, in that bag. Um, but I read this, I it was, it was, I was in the middle of watching it. And then I ended up coming across an op-ed, like, a basically an opinion piece. Um, by Torre. So Torre, he has a platform. I think he has a. It's called like the Torre Show. But he's he's a long time like hip hop journalist. Um, journalist in general. I think he's worked for a lot of big publications. But if you see his face, you you know who who it is. But but um, I, I read his op ed and he said um he made this comparison right. So he said that like there's there's two different kinds of comedians right. You got material guys, and you got you got material comedians and then you got phone book comedians, right? And so what it is is like a material guy is a guy that has it's their stand up and then they have these like crafted jokes. They have the, a setup. Um, they might give a call back, that, you know, and it's like this material, like and and it's it's stuff that you could kind of like it's these scenarios and you could kind of recite. And then you got a guy that uh, they call a phone book guy, which is meaning that it's like. Their material isn't what's funny. It's them that's funny. So, like, literally anything they do on stage, you would probably laugh at because their energy is so infectious and it is so funny. And to the extent that, like, you could read a phone book, which I know a certain generation don't even know what a phone book is. But but the, the analogy is that, like, like, Cat Williams could literally read a phone book. And we would be busting out laughing like that's the kind of funny he is. And he was saying like, well, Cat Williams might be the 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 best phone book comedy guy there is out there. Right. And I ain't gonna lie. Like when I first you know I mean, based off what I had seen so far, I was like, oh, he might be right. Like because. Yeah, it is Cat Williams doing his persona. Like almost, it's almost like the Money Mike persona. His it's the voice, it's the antics. All that shit is hilarious. Like every time he's on the stage, like he does not dis like that's what I'm saying about Cat Williams. He don't disappoint. 
He does not disappoint when he's on the stage and everything. It looks good. It sounds good, right? Um, but yeah, like it, and he he was saying like, well, where are the jokes, right? So I kind of, you know, I, I kind of I felt that way a little bit, but then when I watched it, I was like, no, no, there is material in here. There are some good jokes. I mean, the craft of of, of great stand up comedy is there. He he did have some callbacks in in the mid in the middle of the set, like he he making jokes about certain things and, and whatever. Um, but I thought it, I thought it was good. Um, yeah, like um, you know, it was called woke folk. It was called woke folk, and this special he he special he focused in on just various like headlines over the over the the, the past year. Um. And and you know he he did tie a lot of it back to like race and things like that. And one thing I'd say though that I was surprised about, I thought he was gonna go in a little bit more on the Shannon Sharp interview and like go in on the people that he was talking about. But I would say I have maybe you gotta give him a pat on the back. Is that like he did not use this special to like to like breathe further life into that interview now. Um, he did mention it one in the very beginning. He kind of got it out of the way. He was just like, "All right, you know what I mean? Like, hey, y'all know what I be doing? I be I be finding out secrets, and then I I run back to tell y'all." Um, and then he made a little joke about Shannon Sharp, like, "Yeah, if it wasn't for Shannon Sharp's loud ass, I would, you know, like basically like, yo, he's the one that like helped to expose certain things and certain narratives, and and um, but no, he he was just kind of. He, he he talked about a lot of different things that that affected black culture in certain ways, certain headlines that were a little bit questionable. Um, the questionable one he was talking about, like Jamie Foxx and like how the news, like basically he's saying how the news will will and the media will just put stuff out there that just doesn't make any sense. Like when you really think about it, it doesn't make any sense. And he's talking about, remember when, when Jamie Foxx was sick and then it was a mystery illness. He makes a joke about that, like a mystery, what, what's a mystery illness, you know? And then when they said they cured it and he was like, what are you talking about? Like, how do you cure? What, you can't cure a mystery, but like, what are y'all talking about? So like stuff that doesn't make sense. He focused in on um, just different events in in the black community that either we're not proud of. So he talked about Carly Russell um, or stuff that we are proud of. And he talked about the Alabama, uh, the riverboat brawl, the Alabama riverboat brawl. And um, it was good. I thought it was good. I thought it was solid material. It was very it was the, the same thing, though, over. It was a lot. A, a lot of it was about race. A lot of it was, you know, which he does do that. You know what I mean, he he does get into that, um, but just also talking about how like we can't let let the media change language. Like woke is not supposed to be this political thing. Woke is literally the opposite of asleep, right? So like like you know we got to stop letting the media, you know, change our perceptions of things, and um we we gotta we gotta kind of seek the truth. We gotta seek the truth. Um, let's see. Uh, it is hard to it is hard to root against Cat Williams. You know I mean, so like it doesn't it didn't look like he he's he's lost a step or anything like that. Um, I would say this it was a good, it was a solid special. It's not his best. I don't think it's his best uh, special. You know what I'm saying? But it there wasn't there wasn't anything bad to say about it. Like for real, for real. it wasn't really nothing bad to say because I was laughing the whole time. Like I was I was laughing the whole time, and that's. There might have been, there was, there was a missed joke here or there. Like there, he made this weird uh, joke about white slaves and like how they were the worst slaves and like, but it was like, it just didn't tie into nothing because it was like, you know, like that's a lie that, that people told that white people have told that, that black people are lazy, even though we like hardest work. And he was like, well, here's the secret. I mean, white people were the worst slaves ever, you know, whatever. And, but it was just like, Okay, like like where where are we going with that? Yeah, you know I mean, so again, there again, there might have been a few misses, but like I can't, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let that take away from the whole show. But I would say that this not it wasn't his best, it wasn't his it wasn't the best Cat Williams you could ever see, but it was it was still really good.
we're going to talk about lovers and liars. So lovers and liars is basically the F girl Island reboot of F boy Island. Right. So, so they didn't want to make a show called F boy, uh, F girl Island. Right. So they, they rebranded it and they called it lovers and liars and it is hosted by Nikki Glazer. So I've seen Nikki Glazer now for four. This is now season. This is the fourth season of the iteration of the show. Uh, F boy Island has three seasons and now this is the first season of lovers and liars. And um, yeah, it's it's a good it's a good show overall. It's something that I could I could see myself recapping. And so again, if you don't know what F Boy Island is, F Boy Island is kind of like the batch. It's kind of like the Bachelorette, right? So instead of one woman, though, you got three women, and their pool of men is like it's like twenty four guys. The the catch is that some guys are designated as because it's a game show too, so it's it's a competition. Some guys are 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 designated as nice guys, other men are uh designated as uh F boys, and then depending on who you pick at the end, because this is it's all a secret. It's all a secret. Um, depending on who you pick at the end, if you pick a nice guy, then y'all get to y'all you're a couple and y'all split the money. If if the if a woman would pick a f boy, then that man gets to choose, so he could walk away with hundred thousand dollars, or he could be with the girl, and then they split the money fifty fifty. So this is now the inverse, right? So now it's now it's like the bachelor, but again, you got three guys, and then they're trying to get this pool of women. So it's funny because the way that show started was the fact that um, all like they do their like kind of like audition like type of thing. But the the three guys that they chose are former contestants of F Boy Island, and all these guys have had different designations. Like you had, and you know, one of the guys um, was a nice guy, and then he came back on the show, and then he was F Boy. You got, and then I think you got like yeah, you have basically you got former contestants of the show, and these guys are looking for love. Now, the show, the psychology of the show is to to basically can you based off of you know short interactions with somebody face-to-face -face interactions can you determine somebody's deeper intentions can you determine if somebody is really here for you or if they're here for the money so to speak and what i'm gonna say is this i'm gonna say um well that's the question who's better who's better at, at figuring out um true intentions and after watching this show after watching a couple episodes of the show Men, we're definitely, you know, we're stronger than women. And, like, you know, we, we play a pivotal role in creating society the way it is. But when it comes to games of emotion, games of mind games in general, man, women take the cake, man. Women women got, like, they do have us beat, man, in so many ways. So, like, women, I, I feel like, I feel like it's harder, it's harder for men Men lie. I think. I think. I think we all lie. Probably we probably lie to the same degree, right? Men typically are bad at lying, like so to speak, because you know, men we get we get caught, you know, in our lies and things like that. Like we, you know, women are sneakier. Like I think women are a little bit more stealthy. Part of the stealth has to do with the fact that there's certain social constructs and norms that you know a man is not allowed to be like asking too many questions and and he got to be confident he got to be secure you know what i mean but he can't he can't do the digging and the, the the crazy stuff that women do to figure out stuff you know what i mean so so that's part of it like we don't in, men don't investigate women at the same rate that women investigate men i'm of course there are men out there that, that do their digging um, but that's part of why they figure stuff out. I mean, and in why we well, probably why we think they're sneaky is because um, we don't really be diving into stuff. But I would say that it's I think it is. I'm seeing that it's like there are a lot of men that kind of go into situations and they hide their true intentions and they end up dogging dogging certain women out. But I feel like it's easier to detect when a man because I'm a man. So when I'm when I was watching F Boy Island, it's like, girl. How don't are you dumb? Like, are you silly? Like, how don't you see that this guy is who who this guy is? Women know. Oh yeah, no, no. It it's hard. It is hard 
like based on this logic, whatever, I think in, in the real world, it's probably not because I think most women come in with good intentions, unless if you're kind of coming into a situation leading with your money and things like that, then yeah, if you play stupid games, you're going to win stupid prizes, right? So like if you lead with your money, you are very likely to get a woman that's like, you know what I mean? You're going to attract, you're going to attract women that want money, Right. And so you're going to get a lot of women that ain't there for you necessarily. But I would say in the real world, most times women are coming in with genuine intentions. And it's because like they, they get women have the pick of the litter. Men come in with bad intentions sometimes or they don't show their true intentions because they try and get some pussy. Like they trying to get some ass because ass don't don't it ain't we don't have the access to it. like we do, but we don't like. We, you know, we can, we can, you know, seduce some women, but yeah, a woman, she can have sex with like sh virtually anybody that she wants to, if she wants to have sex with them. I mean, she might have to put herself out there. She might have to, ain't nobody say that, ain't nobody saying that she don't have to like maybe lower her standards or like kind of lower her inhibitions or kind of look past her own, you know, m social norms and things like that but if she wants to lay with somebody she probably could if a man wants to lay with somebody he you know unless he's unless he is fully lowering his standards he gotta he gotta put some work in he gotta put some work in so like yo these women man um they're making it tough for these guys to figure out like who's nice and who's not because it's just like they know how to turn it on and turn it off and they're just like some of these women are just so sweet now the women that are really like really out shout out and like really f girls, I feel like you can see it. I feel like you can see it. But um, these guys so far they're having a tough time because you got a couple contestants that like, you know, they're getting rid of a lot of nice girls and 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 they're get they're feeling bamboozled. One thing, so I'm gonna I'm just talk about the show real quick, and then we're gonna wrap it up. But like one thing I do appreciate about this show, and this is something that this is for Levi, more so, um, and anybody that was interested in in F Boy Island. So F Boy Island season three took a took a hit because it went from being an HBO Max show, so it was a little bit more like you know a little bit more freedom and leeway to do what you want to do in terms of the content. Like, you know, they they weren't nude, whatever, but it was a little bit more like the language was different and everything. So and then they went to the CW, which is a family is a family network, is a family channel. Um, And they they kind of switched how they did things and it felt rushed. It felt, you know, season three of F-Boy Island felt kind of rushed. Lovers and Liars season one right so far they are getting back to the essence of F-Boy Island and what I mean by that is like they're keeping it a mystery for whatever reason in season three we knew who these guys were from the beginning so what they're doing in F and we're gonna call it F-Girl Island um what they're doing on this show is that they're they're going back to that to where like they they probably revealed like two girls off the rip because the, and it seemed like they revealed it themselves in their monologue, but like it's it's more of a it's more of a crapshoot. So like these men don't know what they're dealing with. Um, the episode that I just saw and they do it every season. They they have an episode where the the either the girls or the guys depending on who's who's being sought after. Um, they they do a deep dive into their social media. Now here's the thing. I might not be able to tell. I, here's the thing. Just off face value, you know what I mean? Interactions. I probably can't tell your intentions. I can't tell if you're here for money. I can't tell if you're F girl. But lo and behold, that social media going to tell it every time. Let's not. Yeah, man. And this is it's funny because a lot of women were getting upset. Like, because like they didn't know, even though this is part of the show. I don't, you know, they didn't know this was going to happen. So, like, there was a lot of women that were, like, appalled and shocked. Like, oh, my God, he went on my social media. Like, and this is the thing that so many women said. It's like, yo, it's not it's not reality. It's not who I am. I'm not really reflecting who I am on there. But then it's like, I get it to an extent. Like, if you have a business, like, you can't, you know, you cannot give your full personality. But, like. Like so, then what is real? Like why 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 are we posting things that are not us, right? That are not representative of us. Why are we taking pictures of things that are not representative of us? Because that's a cop out. Like when we say, oh, I, I you know, 
now me i have i have i have two instagram accounts right so i really like i don't really post on my personal anymore you know what i'm saying i'm not even going to share my personal on this show whatever like you could you could probably figure it out or you find it you know what i mean so but um i don't really post on my regular so my my identity has become more so the podcast now there are things there are topics that i bring up that might not be how i feel because a lot of times I'm bringing up a topic that I want, I, I'm trying to get engagement. I, I want it. I want to talk about these things either with a guest or with the audience. I want to, I want to have a conversation about these things. And sometimes I'm bringing up topics and, and I'm not saying anything about it. I'm just kind of bringing it up and like seeing what you think of it. But, but I can't, and, and, and again, some of the topics might not even be representative of how I feel, but it's just like, yo, this is a good topic. That's different than like posting pictures and acting like you're somebody that you're not. And that's what a lot of these women were like, no, that's not even really me. There was a girl that she goes to raves like all the time. And then she's like, oh, that's just a small part of my who I am. And it's not really it's not really who I And it's like, but but all right. let Well, then let's see. Here's the thing. Let's put some timestamps on these on these posts. If you if unless you're posting shit once a month or something like that once a week you know what i mean and it's like and it's a variety of things and then like sure certain things recur and like we start seeing you at the raves like every night like at least once a month maybe that's not your personality but the fact that you posted it and you wanted it public and you kept it public it is it is a part of you so let we gotta we gotta cut the shit right and we can't be saying like oh it's not it's not really who i am Sure, certain maybe certain instances, but like a lot of time, like no, it that's who you are. And again, unless you have some duality, and when I say duality, it's like you have like two different entities, two different audiences, because you have like a personal page and you have a business page or content creation page or whatever it is, um, comedy page, rap page, whatever, right? Music page. Unless you have that kind of duality where like, yeah, it is like I might rap about some things that I'm not living. Right. You know, I might have comedy bits on stuff that I'm not really living as opposed to like, yo, you're just kind of a regular person. And like, oh, we can tell that you're self-absorbed. We can tell that you're conceited. We can tell that you're into, you know, what I mean, you're you're for everybody. You know what I'm saying? We can tell you like to show your body in a certain way. And like that, that can tell you tell a lot about, you know, somebody. So like we gotta cut it out and be like, oh, but no, it's not. That's not who I am. But but you're let even if that's not who you are, you're letting that represent you. You're letting that image represent you. So like, who's real? Who's fake at that point? So I don't know, man. I think y'all should check it out, man. Lovers and liars, lovers and liars. It's on the CW. Um, I think the episode, new episodes come out on Fridays. But check it out. Um, probably towards the end of the season, you probably hear me talk about it again, especially if something egregious pops up. But that was that was that was the key for this last week that I saw. It was the social media thing, and it was like, well, do we or do we not, you know, show who we really are on social media? You got again, you have a lot of people, men and women, women and women, that be like, oh, this ain't real, man. Y'all y'all can't believe everything y'all see. But then, but why why is that? If you don't want people to believe what they see, why are you putting that out in the first place? That's the that's the part where we got to be real with ourselves. Like, okay, but but you're letting that be your image, whether right, wrong, or indifferent. You know what I'm saying maybe you are here to entertain. Well, then you need to have two pages. Then you need to have that entertainment page and you need to have that personal page so we know what the difference is. All right. And then last thing, man, just before we wrap this up, man, just going to talk about the playoffs a little bit, man. The, the playoffs have been um, – it's been great, man. Um, what's exciting about the playoffs is that finally – because you got – man, Jordan – I want to say Jordan. LeBron, man. LeBron is really – LeBron and guys like Steph Curry, Kawhi Leonard, you know what I mean? Tim Duncan ain't in the league no more. You know, like – there's a lot of Kevin Durant. Like, you got a lot of, like, we are actually seeing another, we're, in real time, we're seeing another generation evolve, right, and develop, and 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 we're seeing a changing of the guard. And we we kind of been seeing that. Once the once the Warrior Dynasty kind of ends, um, 
and we thought it was over. We thought it was over when the Raptors beat them, right? And then two years later, they came back and won again, right? They beat the Celtics. But then, but we've we've had some first time champions, right? Like, and not, maybe not franchise, but like we had guys that won their first championship. We had Giannis win his first championship. We just had uh, Jokic win his first championship. We had the fucking Phoenix Suns in the finals against the Bucks, right? Uh, who the Nuggets? Who they beat? Like, oh, they they played the Heat. The Heat's pretty much a mainstay. They they've been around, but. It's exciting to see because you know after the after the playing games after the first round right we we don't have we don't, no Kevin Durant in the playoffs no LeBron James in the playoffs you know what I'm saying and um obviously no Steph Curry in the playoffs and and the Warriors and all them right so we're really seeing like these younger teams like come out of nowhere and like yo like I mean you get the, you get that taste of the playoffs hopefully you can you can replicate that. Um, we didn't have any teams that were like sub 500 that were in the top, like end up being in the top eight, you know, for both sides. Like, like every team was above 500. Like the NBA is actually in a very nice competitive spot right now. And it feels like, you know, these new stars can, can, can emerge. Right. And we talk about new stars. I want to say new, like yesterday new, but I mean, like, Again, we got an old generation of stars that are starting to creep out of the game. Like, they're going to be retiring in the next couple of years. But, you know, you got your Jokic's. You got your you got your um, Anthony Edwards, obviously. You got your Jason Tatum's. You got your um, SGA's. You got, you know, I mean, Kyrie. Even though Kyrie is kind of like, he's kind of in the middle. He's kind of in the middle of the old and the new, right? But you got Luka. You know what I'm saying? Um Yo, it's it's exciting to see, man. Halliburton, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's exciting to see. So, uh, right now we're in the second round of the playoffs, and second round has been pretty competitive. I'm pretty sure as of this recording, let me just double check real quick. Can I just double check real real quick? Fact check. As of this recording, as of this recording. As of this recording, yes, the Cavaliers have been eliminated. So, you know, and and that's the thing. Donovan Mitchell, he's a piece. He's a piece that we're going to be seeing. Like, I, I don't think he's a free agent. I don't think he's a free agent. I think people are going to – the Cavs, they have to use him as a as a chip. Like, they have to use him as a trade chip because um, – the fran I mean, yeah, you got Garland, you got you got Jared Allen, you know, you got some, you got some, those are your guys that maybe like you could build upon. Um, but you gotta get somebody if you got you brought in a Donovan Mitchell and you gave up a lot, right, to get him. Well, now you gotta get a lot to to replenish him, whatever. So, like, um, if you're gonna trade him, don't don't wait till the last minute, right? Don't wait till like you know, he he you know plays another season you got to trade them and you got to get pieces now so they're eliminated um uh maverick and Th mavericks and, and and the thunder that's a good series um as of this recording it is tied 2-2 two -two. at the end of game four i was just like i was looking i was like yo i was watching i said yo i think i think OKC is gonna they're gonna they're gonna take it they're gonna take it and then yo sga man he just was yo he's nice nice like i again like some of these some of these guys, we're going to start, I think, when certain players kind of stick around for a little bit, it does make certain the casual fan a little bit jaded, and you're like, oh, my God, I don't want to see LeBron and Curry in the finals again. So, like, when you when you do see these newer guys play and, like, they're really good, you're like, okay, this this might make – this might bring me back. This might bring me back to the league. Um, but, yeah, Shea, um, Shea Gilgis Alexander, man, he – Bro, he just – he takes – he's so crafty. He's quick. You know what I'm saying? He's a great playmaker. And he – you could tell the shots that he takes, he practices those shots. Like, like he gets to – he finds his spot, and he's going to take the shot to – you know what I mean? That he knows is going to go in. It's always going to be a pretty high percent shot. He's he's nice. Um, But Kyrie Irving and, 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 and Luka, they're going crazy. Kyrie has been going crazy in the postseason. Um, that's a tied up series. Um, if I had to say, I probably, I would like to see SGA go, but I think, I think, I think the Mavs have what it takes to win. You know what I'm saying, and Kyrie Irving, he, he got, a, he wants to prove that he's like, he's not just a stat padding, you know, hot sauce dribbler. You know what I'm saying? Like he wants to show people that like, yo, no, I'm a, I'm a superstar, I am a piece that you need to win championships. Like, like, 
You know what I mean? Like this, yeah, sure. I got one with LeBron when I was a young boy, but like I'm like that. Like, and that's what he he's kind of showing that in this playoffs. Um, and then on the other side, um, you got you got um in the other games, yeah, you got the Nuggets versus the Timberwolves. Now the Timberwolves came out and they they came out on them 2-0 and they got two blowouts out of that 2-0, right? And so everybody was ready to crown Ant Man. Yeah, you know I mean Jordan's son. Yeah, you know I mean they was ready to they was ready to put the crown and say. And Anthony Edwards is a beast. When you look at their the way their team is is constructed, it's 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 a tough. They're a tough out, man. They got a great front court. Whether you like Rudy Gobert or not, right? Like he he's defensive player of the year. Whether you agree with that or not, he's still he's still a piece. He's a formidable piece. You got a power forward that should be a, a center in Cat who who can get. He's a twenty and ten guy, and he can shoot threes. You got you got veteran solid point guard in Mike Conley. You got your two guard and and Anthony Edwards who could do a little bit of everything. And then you know you put in McDaniel's. Um, anybody else off their bench is is they got a solid bench. You got Nas Reed coming off the bench, like just balling out. Like everybody's giving one hundred ten percent. Um, they're good. They're a good team, and so it made it look like yo it, the Nuggets look kind of fraudulent. They look like damn, like yo this damn y'all about to give Jokic another MVP and like he about to go out and get swept. Well, the Nuggets said not so fast, my friend. Like they they did a lead course, so not so fast, my friend. And they said, yo, nah, we, we the defending chance for a reason. So the Nuggets, after losing two games straight, they just won their third straight game, and they are up now three to two. I would like, you know, as much as I would like to see Ant-Man kind of de dethrone that, well, you know, kind of ascend on his own. Um, I, I am, I, I like the, I do like the, I like the Nuggets team. I like Jokic. I like Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray is one of my favorite players. I like Aaron Gordon. Um, they're an exciting team, man. They're an exciting team to watch. And, and, um, they're showing why they are the defending champs. And then what, what's the other series you got in the other, um, Eastern conference, um, playoff series, you got the Pacers versus the Knicks, man. Talk about nostalgia. Like that is a, that is a nostalgic, that's a nostalgic series, man. That's why I am excited about about this playoffs because we like, although it's a new guard and we're seeing we're seeing new guys kind of come in and, and take over. But you know the fact that the Knicks, the fact that the Pacers, they're in the playoffs in a playoff series. Like we used to love seeing Reggie Miller go go to the Garden and do his thing. I mean, the the NBA is better when the the New York Knicks are good. Like, and they're doing it with they're doing it with a bare bones roster, right? You got guys; these guys are playing forty five at least forty five minutes a game. Jalen Brunson, probably the best undersized guard probably the best undersized player in the nba right now just con constantly doing this thing Any game that Jalen Brunson is like doing well in, now he's a volume shooter. He's a volume shooter, but like he's driving 40. He's driving 40 in a lot of these games. Like he's going crazy. He's going crazy out there. Um, they just got a lot of like guys that are just like scrappy. They got a scrappy team. Um, well coached team overall, I, I would say. Tibbs is, you know, he is a little bit questionable, but um, they're doing their thing. They're doing their thing. So I'm um, excited, man. Excited to see where it is. Um, it's gonna be Celtics and Knicks in the in the Eastern Conference Finals. It's gonna be Nuggets, Nuggets Mavericks, man. Nuggets Mavericks in the Western Conference Finals, man. That's that's my prediction so far right now. So, all right, man. We gotta wrap this up, man. We gotta wrap this up. Um, next week I I did see the new Planet of the Apes, but I I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, we'll we'll probably we'll we'll put that into next week's show. Um. It was, it was good it was good but we we got we got to dig into it man we gotta have a little dive into that one um but yeah man so that that's that we got the playoffs um what do you think man what do you think man where yeah so we talked about the the drinking we brought up resurface drake and kendrick 
We talked about the show Lovers and Liars. We had talked about the Cat Williams special, the Tom Brady roast, and then we got a little bit of basketball in there too, man. So uh, what y'all think of this week's episode? If you're still watching, I need you to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, um, share the content, share the content, share the content, comment, 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 like it, like it, like it, please do your thing, man, so we can keep this thing going on. And uh, yeah, man, this is episode 148 of the 280 Plus Podcast. I'm your host, Los Def, and I'm out.